And I know, I know these threats firsthand, even before the international release of my short documentary film, Fitna, I have faced constant death threats and protests. My name has appeared on assassination list. I have been subject of an Al-Qaeda fatwa. I will be charged with blasphemy and contempt of Muslims by the Jordanian prosecutors. I face prosecution in my own country, in other countries. I was recently banned, as Lord Malcolm Pearson told you, by the United Kingdom because the Home Secretary believed that my mere presence in that country <coughs> constituted a national security threat. And in this, tar in this trying time, let us recall the darkest hours of World War II, when the world faced a global threat from German Nazism, from Italian fascism, and from Japanese imperialism. The British Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, challenged his people to rise to the occasion and fight. He told them, and let me quote Winston Churchill, never, never, in nothing great or small, large or petty, never give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. Never yield to force. Never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. End of quote. And this, this is why I am in America this week, talking about the fight we must now wage in the West to defend our dear liberties. Freedom of association <clears throat> is one of the basic liberties guaranteed not only by the US Constitution, but by the European Convention <clears throat> of Human Rights. And yet, CARE wants to silence and punish Representative Hesno for associating with me. If America needs a poster child for the threat to our freedoms for, from Islamic extremism, no better example than CARE can be found. And this episode underscores that the threat to freedom posed by the creeping Sharia imposed by CARE's type of stealth jihad is not just a problem in the Middle East. It's not just a problem in Europe. It's also a problem in America today. And ladies and gentlemen, I will not, I will never be bullied by Islamic thugs who want to use our freedoms to destroy those very same freedoms. And I will not stand by as they seek to do it to others, as my friend Representative Hesner. Founded and directed by members of the International Network of the Bro Muslim Brotherhood, CARE has an explicit agenda to subvert our freedoms and impose Sharia law on non-Muslims. This is no speculation on my part. This is the testimony of one of CARE's founders and chairman emeritus, Omar Ahmed, who told a Californian audience in 1998 that this was their agenda. And let me quote him. Islam isn't in America to be equal to any other faith, but to become dominant, he said. The Quran, the Muslim book of sculpture, should be the highest authority in America, and Islam the only accepted religion on earth, end of quote. When care officials say themselves that this is their ultimate objective, we should believe them. And in just the past few weeks, the Council of American Islamic Relations, CARE, has sought to silence another courageous lawmaker, Representative Peter King, the ranking member of the Homeland Security Committee in the U.S. House of Representatives. His offense? Rep Representative King correctly, correctly observed that CARE and other Muslims were not providing enough assistance to the law enforcement authorities in combating terrorism-related activities in American mosques. CARE has attempted to silence other critics as well. They have sued bloggers. They have defamed journalists who have asked too many questions about their terrorist ties. And they have tried to intimidate publications that have published <coughs> articles challenging their putative civil <coughs> rights mission. If they get away with it, CARE 
will seek to threaten the careers of more politicians with the courage to say things and associate with those who challenge Sharia and the effort to impose Sharia to this beautiful country. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is utterly, it is utterly hypocritical on the one hand that CARE proclaims to be defending the freedom of religion in attacking Representative Hasna, when, on the other, they actively su seek support from Islamic regimes that are amongst the worst of the worst human rights abuses, abusers on this planet and notorious for suppressing religious freedoms. I have read, as you could have, in Arab newspapers an article that care officials have solicited and received financial support from the Saudi prince Al Khalid bin Talal, whose country outlaws any religious expression except its own Wahhabi extreme strain on Islam. You can't even buy a Bible in Saudi Arabia or wear a cross in the country won by their patrons. And yet, and yet, CARE wants to lecture us about religious freedoms. The land for CARE's Capitol Hill office in Washington, D.C. was purchased with a $250,000 donation from the Saudi-backed Islamic Development Bank, and the deed to their headquarters is held by the foundation of the Europe United Arab Emirates Defense Minister General, General Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. And Sheikh Al Maktoum country prohibits any non Islamic religious proselyting and threatens anyone caught with distributing religious literature with imprisonment. In September 2006, ladies and gentlemen, CARE hosted an exclusive dinner with former Iranian President Mohammed Khatami. And under Khatami's regime, religious minorities were severely prosecuted. Non-Muslims were regularly harassed and hundreds, hundreds of students, protesters, were murdered. The fact that CARE chose to honor this dictator, who was still a senior member of the Islamic theocracy in Iran, tells us much. Ladies and gentlemen, whether it is America or back home in my own country, the Netherlands, we are under attack by groups like CARE who aim to silence their critics. And this is why I am in America this week. I aim to continue a fight regardless of the threats and regardless of the intimidation, and I am asking Americans to join with us. And when they attack good men and brave men like Representative Adam Hasner, we must realize that they are attacking each and every one of us and the freedoms that we hold dear. Thank you so much.